What's going on guys? Linus here. Welcome to some more Civilization 5. You all wanted me to play another campaign. I wanted to do it as well, so I figured I'd just start right now. I'm going to be playing as Dido or Dido of Carthage. And I still have to edit the game. I'm playing with some mods that make the game a little interesting. I'm also playing on Epic Game Pace because I like that. Difficulty level 6, that's fine. Standard is fine. Continence is also... No, wait, I'm going to set it to... Already spoiling the uh, the little mod surprise, but I'm playing on a map of Europe, which is actually really interesting. It's a small type. There's six players, 12 city states, and I'm gonna go to advanced setup. I'm gonna be playing as Dido, and I want to be playing with some other people that are also new, like Budika of the Celts, and let's see who else is new. Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden is gonna be in the game. And uh, Ethiopia, of course, deserves to be in the game. The Netherlands needs to be in there because they're like only the coolest country ever. And also, I think I'm gonna go with Pakal of the Mayas. And we're gonna be playing with 12 city states, no time victory because that's boring. And everything is pretty much set the way I want it. So uh, we're all in different teams, that's the way it's supposed to be. Everyone is. Let's start the scenario. So, I'm gonna be playing on a map of Europe. You wanted me to play more Civ, and I figured I'd go with a little mod. That's actually really fun. I like playing on a map of Europe. And let's start. I'm gonna shut up so you can actually hear the story about Dido. Blessings and salutations to you, revered Queen Dido, founder of the legendary kingdom of Carthage. Chronicled by the words of the great poet Virgil, your husband, Asabas, was murdered at the hands of your own brother. King Pygmalion of Tyre, who subsequently claimed the treasures of Asabas that were now rightfully yours. Fearing the lengths from which your brother would pursue this vast wealth, you and your compatriots sailed for new lands. Arriving on the shores of North Africa, you tricked the local king with the simple manipulation of an ox hide, laying out a vast expanse of territory for your new home, the future kingdom of Carthage. Clever and inquisitive Dido, the world longs for a leader who can provide a shelter from the coming storm, guided by brilliant intuition and cunning. Can you lead the people in the creation of a new kingdom to rival that of once mighty Carthage? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Okay, so it's Dido, not Dido. Okay, note to self, it's Dido. Also, she gets Phoenician heritage. All coastal cities get a free harbor, which is great. I mean, that's a pretty good ability, right? All your cities get a harbor, automatic trade routes, everything, extra production from the sea. But units may also cross mountains after the first great general, which would be Hannibal, I think, is earned, taking 50 HP damage if they end a turn on a mountain. So 50 HP damage is half of your health. So you could actually uh, go onto a mountain, lose a, bit of, a little bit of health if you have no other choice, and then leave it after. But you can just cross mountains like it's nothing and it is great. Also, she gets the African Force Elef Elephant, which is a powerful early game mounted unit weak to spearmen. <clears throat> Only uh, civilization to, to actually build them. Higher uh, combat strength than the horsemen, which it replaces. And it also helps produce great generals more quickly. And for another uh, unique unit, they get the Queen Quarim. I hope I'm saying that right. A strong ancient era naval unit used to dominate the seas through melee attacks on naval units and cities. Only the Carthaginians may build it. So that's just a boat. I don't really like playing with boats, but whatever. We got one. We got a pretty good boat. It's melee only, but whatever. Let's begin. So our starting position is not amazing. First of all, let's actually move. Here we go. It will get better over time as we expand, but all we have is silver. A couple of hails are nice. We've got some good protection. If we go over here, we have some good protection because we have hills everywhere and and uh, forests and uh, the other side of a river. I mean, the attacking from the other side of a river is also a pretty big handicap. So if we actually build our city here, we're going to be good. Uh, all that's left is one tile of grassland, which could be uh, vulnerable to attack, but whatever. We're fine. We will get to, to the silver. We get that pretty much immediately. And then later on, we can expand to uh, the, sh the sugar and the gold. But that is only a matter of time before we actually get there. So let's just found the city of Carthage. There you go. Five gold per turn. We are probably not working this tile yet. But it's going to give us more gold. 
So that's also nice to have some, a little bit of starting gold. It's set to a default focus, but I'm going to set it to food for now. Uh, but we already are working the grassland, which gives us a bunch of food. So that's pretty good. For our first, um, let's see, our very first technology, I think I'm going to go with, let's see, let's open a tree. I want to get to writing first, I think, to get some science going. So I'm just going to start with pottery. It doesn't really matter whether I start with pottery or animal husbandry. I'm probably going to do animal husbandry after this one and then mining to get to silver. But we are still happy. We're, oh, there's wine there as well. It's also nice. But we're still pretty happy, so we don't necessarily meet the uh, the bonus that it gives. I'm going to go with the scout first, as I always do, so we can scout the surrounding area and make sure that there's no mean people around. Also, I have a little timer right now, so it's 7.22 in the evening, not in the morning, even though it says that for some reason. It doesn't say PM. Um, <clears throat> which is also a mod available in the workshop. If anyone is wondering how to get extra maps or whatever, they're all in the Steam workshop for this game. And are we good to go? Social pause is fine. We research archery, should research mining. <clears throat> Needs production. We're working on that. Too small to undertake large constructions. Okay, so we are focusing on growing the city. We got food going, so we're all good to go. You need to go over there. I want you to check it out. We got some grain there. This would be a potential place to build a second city, maybe on the hill, something like that, but... For now, let's just focus on Carthage, because that is our only city. Set up on a hill. So it seems there's a lot of grassland down there. I hope Budika didn't spawn there, because she's going to get lots of faith from that. And also, she can be quiet a bitch. I've played some games with her in it, and she was very friendly to me, and then in the end, she's like, backstab. So I'm not sure if she's really someone I want to have close to me. But that's not really something to worry about now, is it? Five more turns for the... Uh, <clears throat> for the scout, and then six more turns for the city to grow. So here's some good food tiles, close, all with two foodies and, and stuff like that, so it's pretty good. I will get us a bu bunch more gold. There's not too great food, like there's, um, let's see, what is good? Truffles give a lot of money later on. Grain would be nice to have closer, because that gives a lot of food, or bananas, but whatever. We're still okay, I'm going to keep the city set to a food focus for the first couple of turns, and then later on we can expand and, uh, Maybe change it to another focus, just manually change it if I want to. But for now, this is fine. Uh, four more turns, next turn. Uh, we have less points than the rest. I don't know what that is. Maybe they all already have a technology or they found some good ruins that give you extra uh, population in your city. But I didn't, because I am not very lucky. So I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> Nothing really. Ah, we met Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. Yes, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But you may call me Hail Selassie. Hey, do you want to? He's making more money than me. That's bullshit. Another mod I have is Info Edict. It will show you like score, military, so we can see that he already has a second unit, which is probably another warrior or something like that. Probably found him in a ruin, or his warrior was upgraded to a spearman. Something like that probably happened. He's making more gold than me, which is accurate. GMP is a bit higher because he has more money. Treasury, I can see that go. Happiness, he's got higher, so he probably has found a natural uh, wonder, something of the sort. And in culture, we are pretty much even, which means one culture per turn. We also have the World Fact Book, where you can see that I am the number one because I have one city, a population of 1,000, land area. It's pretty much equal to everybody else, but some people already have upgraded some things. They're already a bit higher, like technology. Some people have another technology, it seems, that they've already found, probably through ruins, uh, industrial output, that's just production, I think. Um, active duty military, I only have one unit, but so someone else probably has better units or more units, something like that. <clears throat> and then there's the global uh, relations, this is um, Ethiopia, this is me, there's no lines, because we have n nothing really, we don't have a defensive pact, or we are not denouncing, declaration of friendship, on borders. we have nothing, so there's no lines yet. Same with this, we basically don't really have anything. We are neutral towards each other, so you can see that there. Uh, graph hover display, no, go away. So that's how it works. So we're just gonna go back and say goodbye to that guy because there's nothing we can do. Oh, there he is, that's his scout. So he's probably some someplace close by, is a pretty safe bet to go by, seeing as he's already found me this quick. And now we have our own scout, so let's go scout for a little bit. He's probably somewhere off to that side, I'd, I'd guess. 
uh, next we are going to be making a monument. Because they help you expand your borders and they get more culture and they're nice. I like them. Some more wine. Carthage has grown, so that's good. We are... We basically have two workers now. They are set to food focus, but because we only have one grasslands, we're not getting all too much food. And we don't have the money to buy another tile. So for now, we're going to have to um, live with the fact that our city is not grown too fast. We could also set it to default focus, but it's not really a difference right now. Because they obviously don't want the city to starve, so they're not going to change that production to... I mean, they're not going to change that citizen to production or something like that. Listen to the Dutch. Listen to it. Wow. He sounds like a giant nerd in Dutch. Basically said, do you need something? I still have a lot to do. And it was like, yeah, no, bye. It's basically the extent of that. So anyway, we're going to go with animal husbandry. See if there's some horses, maybe some cows nearby. And uh, go away, you Dutch scout. Nobody wants you. So hopefully you can forge an alliance with the Dutch, because they're pretty nice. In most games that I've played with them, they have actually turned out to be the underdog. Uh, I don't know why, but they s just keep losing. Even though the Dutch are supposed to be pretty rich and whatnot, and they just turn out to be not too rich, and they just screw themselves over. I don't know why they do it, but it just happens for some reason. Please don't ask me about that. It's not very accurate compared to how the Dutch are in real life, so that's all I'm going to say. Ah. Uh. Dun, 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 dun. That's how it sounds to me, but it's Swedish. I know that there's there's gonna be a lot of Swedish people watching this because of some, for some reason it seems a lot of my uh, my subscribers come from Scandinavia. So if I if I offended you by by pretending to speak a weird kind of uh, Swedish, then I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It just sounds funny to me. I don't know why. Even though Dutch is even a, a way weirder language probably to most people. Because no one speaks it except for Dutch people. Which makes sense. But still, public declaration from Ethiopia to pr protecting Prague or Prague or whatever the hell you want to call it. Rough terrain bonus. Just go around Prague and you attack them. Okay, that's not really going too great, is it? Next turn. I am actually surprised we haven't found a single ruin yet. I was kind of looking forward to finding some of those, but whatever. Go heal yourself. And now, the city's growing super slowly, right? We are building a monument, and that's nice, but we need more food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a tile. I have the money now, and I might as well spend it. Now, we can pick any of these four, because those are the cheapest, and they give the most food. And it doesn't really matter, but I want to try and get to the wine as fast as I can. So I'm just going to buy that tile... And be done with that. And also, we're going to work it. There you go. And now it's only 14 more turns instead of 28 to grow. Shut the fuck up, William. So, he will give me 25 gold if I accept an embassy. 20, 62 gold not included in this deal. If I accept an embassy, which means he will have a slight overview of my city. Oh, it's the Mayas. Yo, dog. That, that hat is dope. Uh, he doesn't accept embassy. What will you give me for this? Uh, yeah, okay. So they have writing. If you have writing, you can get embassies. That's also a new thing in the Gods and Kings expansion. And it basically in it improves your relations somewhat. And it can get you a little bit of gold in the beginning, which is nice. Because people are willing to give you like 25 gold most of the time for a uh, an embassy in your capital. So now William and Pakal can see a little bit of my city, a little bit of the surroundings and stuff. But our relationships also a little bit better if you look at this. We have no contested borders and they have an embassy. And no contested borders, no contested borders. So everyone is pretty much happy with me right now. And they have an embassy, but it doesn't say we don't have contested borders. So they might be pretty close to me. There's no real way of saying. But it's just a nice way of uh, having a little bit of starting capital. Just giving people an embassy in your, in your capital. And also a way of improving your relations. And also we just found Cerro de Potosi, which I think is something to do with silver. I think, because Potos Potosi is not like some mountain village in somewhere in Southern America, I believe, where they uh, mine silver. But don't quote me on that, because I'm not sure. 
Um, next will be because we already we already have uh, animal husbandry. We don't have horses. There's horses there, and there's some cows there. We have a pretty stupid starting position. There doesn't seem to be anything great, but there might be like uranium or something later on. But for now, it's not too great. But I'm gonna go with archery to get some better units, and then after that, we can just focus on sciency stuff. Is fire on the barbarians because they do not deserve to live. Scout, you scout. Do what you do best. Where'd my warrior go anyway? Still healing? Oh, he's dying because he's being attacked by three different units. Ah, oh, crap. He's dead. He's dead. Next, we're going to be working on a... We can make another scout. They're suggesting it. Not sure why. I don't really like having more than one scout because they all have the same purpose. Um, so I'm going to make a, let's see, we're getting close to our first social policy, but it's still, Settler still three policies away, so I'm going to go with, not a Settler, I don't really want to do that, I'm going to go with the Warrior, just to get a second unit that might actually do a little bit of damage. Uh, here we go, you go over there, just keep exploring, basically. I don't know how he is still alive, but it seems like he may have made it, unless this Warrior chases him. Which it does, of course. Run into the forest, you jackass. Keep shooting on the barbarians. There you go. And I don't know. What's my scout? Is, is checking up on the Swedish scout. We caught up to the Ethiopians in points. So that's pretty nice. The Netherlands and Sweden are now friends. Just like in real life. I would like to be friends with William as well. Hey, what's up? Do you want to be friends? Okay, you jackass, he doesn't want to be friends with me. How about you? Do you want to be friends? Okay. Embassy he doesn't have writing yet, so I can't offer him an embassy or receive one uh, right now. But that will come later. So we found the coast. It's not quite sure what coast this is, actually. Where the heck are we? So you can get a policy. I'm going to go with Liberty, which will give us extra culture in every uh, city. And then later on we can go into production or a free worker and then also a free settler, which would be nice to have. I don't like building my first settler because if you start working on a settler, that means that you have to stop working on your, your city size. Your, um, your food production just stops immediately and your city will not grow when you're working on a settler. So if you're like very slow on production, then it will take forever for your city to keep growing. And that's why I don't make a settler first. Most of the time, unless I have a start where I get pretty good production. Um, you you up, buddy. You need health. So I just picked the um, the policy. That's a pretty good one. And I like the Liberty Tree. It's probably one of my favorite ones to start out with. I always start with Liberty or Tradition, but mostly Liberty. Because it gives you good stuff. It gives you culture a little bit. And also production in your city. A free worker, which is great. A settler, which is amazing. Each city you find will increase the culture cost less and it starts a golden age. So that's also good. And then also extra happiness for every um, every city connected to the capital through a trade route. That's not amazing, but it's okay. You get some happiness from it. Over here, which is nice, is the uh, extra production when building wonders. It's okay. One happiness for every 10 citizens. It takes forever to get there in the beginning. Uh, free culture building, which means a monument. That's nice to have. Garrison units cost no maintenance. I guess it's it's useful when you're in a war, but in the beginning you will probably not be at war. Extra growth and food in the capital. Now that one is nice to have in the beginning, but it takes three points just to get there. And then there's gold and minus and happiness for every two citizens in the capital, which is also pretty good. But still, it takes a while to get there, and I prefer getting a free worker and settler. I mean, that's just pretty nice to me. Now next thing we're going we're gonna to do is we're going to take mining. So we can get some mines going, we can get some extra production, hopefully later if we have a worker. And also we can uh, improve our silver, which we haven't done yet. Yes, I accept your embassy. Free money? I will never say no to free money. There's another barbarian close to the city and he's almost dead. He's probably the guy I was chasing after my warrior before. Now let's see, 80. Now if I'm worried that another civilization might try and steal my wine, I could just buy it. But I'm pretty sure no one started that close to me. So I don't really feel the need to purchase another tile just yet. I'm going to keep on uh, onto my money. Um, and hopefully we can purchase a scout maybe later or an archer. Something like that. But for now I'm just going to keep my money. 
and just there's no real need to spend it right now at least that's what i think so i'm not going to spend it on something that i probably will not use anyway